Recording in progress. So let's look at this paper, which is probability and stats two, and it's of Feb March 2024. There is only one variant. So it's 849. And let's start the paper. So first of all, let's start underlining it. The question says the length of a sample of 100 in six of a certain type was summarized as follows. And this is the data that's given. The first part, calculate unbiased estimate for population mean and variance. So now, first of all, uh, we will calculate X bar, the sample mean. That is sigma X over N, which is 36.8 divided by 100, which is 0.368. Therefore, the unbiased estimate of population mean is the same thing as sample mean. So let me put it in a box. And this you can also do in the exam. You should, so that it becomes visible to the examiner exactly what you are calculating. Now, the next thing, that is unbiased estimate of population variance, it's n over n minus 1 sample variance. So n is 100, n minus 1 is 99. And then we will write this value, which is 17.34 divided by 100 minus 0.368 square inside the bracket. Yes, you can write down the formula if you want to. This is sigma x square over n minus x bar square. That is the sample variance. And this is unbiased estimate of population variance. That is what we are looking for. So now when we use the calculator, this comes out to be 0 0.03836. Rounded off, that is 0 0.0384, correct to three significant figures. So this is the other thing that was being asked. And uh, let me just shift this down, make sure the spacing is all good. And that's how the two calculations are done. Now it says state a necessary condition for the estimates found in part A to be reliable. So this is about the sample being random. The sample is selected in an unbiased manner. So these are the things that needs to be taken care of. The next question. Now it says a random sample of 250 people living in Barapet was chosen. It is found that 78 of these people owned a particular brand of phone. Calculate an approximate 98% confidence interval for the proportion of people living in this town who own a certain brand of phone. That is part A. And then the second part is about uh, related to this confidence interval. So this is about symmetric confidence interval for population proportion. So for this, what we do is that we write the formula PS plus minus Z square root PS QS over N. Now let me just check one thing that the recording is everything is on. So it's perfect. So now what is PS? That's the proportion of success. So PS is 78 over 250 which in decimals comes out to be 0 0.312. What is QS? That is proportion of failure, which is one minus PS. That comes out to be 0 0.688. We know the number of sample is 250. And uh, we are dealing with a 98% confidence interval. That is a symmetric confidence interval. So that is 98% in the middle and then 1% at the ends. So therefore we read the Z value for 99%, which comes out to be 2.326. So the Z value is also given. So we have PS, we have QS, N was already given, and now we also have Z. So all we have to do is to plug in the values. So therefore this is 0.312 plus minus 2.326 square root. This is 0 0.312 into 0.688 divided by 250. Make a habit of calculating this first and then uh, get it added or subtracted from 0.312. So this is 0 0.312 plus minus, and this is 0 0.06816. I'm working in four significant figures. 
So the final answer from subtraction is 0.244. This is rounded to 3SF. And this one is 0 0.380. I can even write this thing as 24.4%. I can write this thing as 38.0%. This is the 98% confidence interval. That means in this town, between 24.4% and 38% of the people own this BTEC phone. Now, this brings us to part B. Manjeet claims that more than 40% of the people living in this town own this brand of phone. Use your answer to part A to comment on this claim. 40% is 0 0.40. It does not lie in 98% symmetric confidence interval. So therefore, we have to reject the claim at 98% a confidence level, confidence interval or confidence level. So we cannot accept this claim because it does not lie in this interval. So two questions are down. We are moving to the third one. Now the question says, in a certain lottery, on average, one in 10,000 tickets is a prize-winning ticket. An agent sells 6,000. Use a suitable approximating distribution. Find the probability at least three of the tickets sold by the agent are price winning tickets. So now this is a question originally about binomial. So I'll write X follows a binomial distribution. We are talking about number of trials, the number of tickets, that is 6,000. And the probability of success is 1 over 10,000. And let me evaluate expectation of X, which is NP. So if I multiply these two, I get the value as 0.6. So that was the first thing. Now look at part B. They're asking us to justify this distribution. Even if they have not asked for it, I would still justify. So I'll write since N is greater than 50 and NP is less than five, therefore X follows a Poisson distribution with NP. That is the justification. So I can still write it again over here. N is greater than 50 and NP is less than 5. Therefore, X now follows a Poisson distribution. What is the mean? That is 0 0.6. We are interested in at least 3. So probability X is greater than or equal to 3, which is 1 minus probability X is less than or equal to 2, which is 1 minus and don't forget the e, e raised to power of negative 0.6, 1 plus lambda plus lambda square over 2 factorial. So now it's advisable that you first plug this thing in the calculator, get the answer, and then subtract from 1 so that you don't make any errors while plugging in. So therefore, this is 1 minus 0.97688. Eight, eight, when we do the subtraction and we round it off, that is 0 0.0231. Uh, so always make a habit of double checking it. So the next question, that is question number four. Now it says each year a transport, a transport firm uses X liters of gasoline and Y liters of diesel fuel where X and Y have independent distribution. So X follows a normal distribution and Y also follows a normal distribution. So let me first write it down. X follows a normal distribution or I can even write it like this. Expectation of X, that is 10700. Variance of X, that is 950 squared. Expectation of Y, that is 13400. And variance of Y, that is 1210 squared. So now this is the data that we have. And uh, it's also related to the second part. So let me write it over there also. 10,750 square. So 10,750 square. And the other one is uh, 13,412 10 square. So this is 13,412 10 square. This is expectation of X. This is variance of X. This is expectation of Y. And this is variance of Y. So now let's come back to this. 
So in the first part, they're asking us, find the probability that in a randomly chosen year, and this is the data that we have, that is, I think, for a year, each year, there it says. The firm uses more gasoline than diesel fuel. So X is gasoline. So this is gas. So let me just write it. So this is the data for gasoline. And this is the data for diesel. So more gasoline than diesel. That means X is greater than Y. Therefore, X minus Y is greater than zero. Let me introduce a new variable. Let R is equals to X minus Y. So therefore, R follows a normal distribution. What happens to the expectation? It gets subtracted. So 10,700, this value, minus 13,400, naturally, it will come out to be negative. That is negative 2,700. What about the variances? 950 square plus 1210 square, it will get added up. And this answer is a big number. And let me just push the bracket to the side. And this answer is coming out to be 23666, 236600. That is what you get. So the mean gets subtracted, the variance gets added. Probability R is greater than zero. Probability Z is greater than zero minus uh, negative 2700 divided by square root of 2366600. Grab your calculators, simplify. This is probability Z is greater than 1.755, which is one minus phi of 1.755 according to rules of normal distribution. This is one minus 0 0.9603 and the answer comes out to be point. Four, three, nine, seven, and that's the final answer. So that's how the first part that is related with the uh, amount, the volume that is liters versus liters. That's how it's done. But the second part is a bit different. Now the first one is for five mark. The second one, even though it's slightly more difficult, it's also for five mark. So now the question says that uh, find the probability total cost of gas and diesel in a randomly chosen year is between 20,000 and this thing. First of all, it's talking about total and it has introduced uh, money into it. The cost per liter of gasoline and diesel fuel are 0 0.80, 0 0.85 respectively. So let me introduce the variable. A is the uh, total cost of gasoline in a year. And actually it's just the cost, but then we will uh, compare and make it for the uh, whole thing. So this is the cost, B is the cost. This is cost of gasoline. I'll shortly write it as guess. And this is cost of diesel. And since we are dealing with the whole year, so naturally it's that, but it's just an equation. So this is 0 0.80, that is cost per liter. So dollar plus over liter into liter will give me dollars. That is basic everyday maths. So therefore, A is 0.80x and B is 0.85x. And naturally, if we are dealing with the yearly cost, so this will become the cost of gas per year. This is, will become the cost of diesel per year in a randomly chosen year. So basically, it becomes for a year, it becomes for a year. So now this is the concept of multiple. So now what do we do? we will write expectation of A is 0 0.80. Actually, let me add one more step. That is variance of, variance will come later. That is expectation of 0.80x. That is 0 0.80 into expectation of x. That is the expectation of x. That is 0 0.80 into 10,700. I'll use the calculator shortly. Similarly, variance of x is variance of 0 0.80 uh, x and let me not mix up the variables. So this is actually A for the cost. Variance of A is variance of 0 0.80 x, which is 0 0.8 square into variance of x, that is 0 0.8 square into the variance and the variance is given as standard deviation square, that is 950 square. And I'll also write this down shortly. Then we have this thing which is for B, 
So expectation of B is expectation of 0.85x, which is 0.85 into expectation of X. That is 0.85 into some value. That value is this 13,400. So this is 0.85 and let me write it like this. So this is 0.85 into 13,400 and then I'll get a value. So now this thing is done. And what about the variance? Variance of B is variance of 0.85 X and is this X or Y? So this is Y. So I'm uh, be very, very careful about the variables. Okay. And uh, this is first of all, blue marker. This is Y. And then this reddish marker. This is Y, this is Y, this is Y. Okay. So therefore, this is 0.85 square into variance of y, that is 0.85 square into something, that something is this thing, 12, 10 square. So it's all a game of calculator. So now let's first double check very comfortably. Uh, expectation of x, variance of x, expectation of y, variance of y, I have copied it from the previous page. This is the volume in liters. Now the cost per liter of gasoline is 0.8 and per liter of diesel is 0.85. So now I have to work with the cost because we want the probability that the yearly cost should be between 20 and 22,000. So the equation that relates cost and liters is this thing, A is 0.80x, B is 0.85y, X is for gas, Y is for diesel. Expectation of A, this constant is multiplied with this. Variance of A, this constant is squared and multiplied with this. The same scenario over here, that is uh, 0.85 is multiplied with expectation and 0.85 squared is multiplied with variance. So now when I use the calculator, what values do I get? So let me write it down. First of all, expectation of A is coming out to be 8560. So this is 8560. And uh, 577600 is this value, 577600, that is variance of A. Expectation of B is 11390. And variance of B, it's a very big number. So let me just create more space over here. And similarly, let me create some more space over here. Okay. So now this value is coming out to be one zero five seven eight one two point two five. We'll use the exact value. So now once this is done, we are interested in the total. So let W equals to the total cost per year of gasoline plus the total cost per year of diesel. So W follows a normal distribution. I have to add these two expectation. So let me write this thing like this. Uh, let me create more space. So first of all, I'll add 8560 plus 11390. And this is 577600 plus this value, which is 1057812.25 bracket closed. So now W follows a normal distribution. This value is coming out to be 19,950. And this big number is 16354.125. So now a lot of, lot of calculator work. Be very, very careful with the variables, with the numbers. Now it says probability W lies between 22,000 and 20,000. Then probability standardize 20,000 minus 19,950 divided by square root of this big number. This is Z over here. This is 22,000 minus uh, 19,950 divided by square root of this big number over here, 1635412.25, 1635412.25, bracket closed. 
So now Z lies between two values. And let me just uh, shorten the space so I can work comfortably. So Z lies between two values. One of the value is 0 0.03908. And this other value is 1.60302. 1.60302. Now keep in mind, when we work with the uh, Z table and the Z values, so this is one, this is two, this is the third decimal place, that's will become 391. This is one, this is two, this actually the decimal place. So this is one, this is two, this is third value. So basically, this becomes 0.391. This becomes 1.603. So phi of 1.603 minus phi of 0 0.391. Uh, this is rule number, I think, five. If two Z values are positive, phi of the bigger minus phi of the smaller. It depends on how you have studied this. So now when we do this, this comes out to be 0 0.0429941, which comes out to be, actually it's 0 0.42, not 042, it's 0 0.42. So this is 0 0.42. So therefore we can write this thing as 430. This is the answer for this particular question. So a very elaborate question, making up your own equation, dealing with a lot of big, big numbers, and th this is what you get. So now let's look at question number five. Now question number five, as you can see, it's about Poisson distribution. Now the question says, uh, a teacher models the number of girls and boys who arrive late for her class on any day. So this is any day. And uh, as independent random variables, G follows a Poisson distribution, B follows a Poisson distribution. So B is not for binomial, B is for boys, G is for girls, and they both follow Poisson distribution. Find the probability during a randomly chosen day. So now we are just talking about a randomly chosen two-day period. It's not one day, it's two-day period. No girls arrive late. So first of all, the question is only about girls. Girls follow a Poisson distribution. This should become 0.1 into 2. Why? Because this is per day and this is for a two-day period. No girls. Probability G equals to 0. That is E raised to power of negative 0 0.2. 0 0.2 raised to power of 0 over 0 factorial. If you want to write it, you can write it. 0 factorial by definition is 1. And this value comes out to be 0.8187 which after rounding off comes out to be 0.819 correct to three SF, three significant figures. That's the first thing. Now it says find the probability during a randomly chosen five-day period. So now we are talking about a five-day period. Now, if we talk about boys, so boys follows a Poisson distribution for five day, it should be 0.15 into five. And girls follow a Poisson distribution that is 0 0.10 into 5. So this is 0.5. This is 0 0.75. We have to add it up. So therefore, we are talking about total. So total is uh, boys and girls together. So the total follows a Poisson distribution. This is 0 0.75. This is 0 0.5. This is 1.25. And then it's asking for less than 3. It's again about late probability t is less than three. Probability t is less than or equal to two. So therefore, this is e raised to power of negative 1.25. This is one plus lambda plus lambda square 1.25 square over two factorial. So now uh, put everything in the calculator, simplify, write down the unrounded value first, and then the rounded value. So this comes out to be 0 0.869, correct to 3 SF. So I have written the final answer over here, correct to 3 SF. Now, this question is a very nice one. It says, it is given that the values of probability G is equals to R and B is equals to R for R greater than or equal to 3 are very small and can be ignored. What does it mean? First of all, that if the value for which you are calculating the probability for R greater than or equal to three. So three, four, five, all the way till infinity, just ignore that. That means we should be working with the value zero, one, and two. Keep that in mind. 
So now it says find the probability on a randomly chosen day more girls arrive late than boys. So let me write over here girls. Let me write over here boys. More girls arrive late than boys. Now keep in mind we are restricting ourselves with these numbers which is 0, 1 and 2. Now first of all uh, there could be one girl and uh, what about the boys? The boys could be 0. So there is more girl than boys. Perfect. The other option could be there could be two girls and still zero boys. And the third one is two girl and one boy. So now these are the options that we are working with. Now keep in mind, G follows a Poisson distribution. And is it about a day on a randomly chosen day? Yes. So that means I'll write girls follow a Poisson distribution with 0.1. Boys follow a Poisson distribution with 0.15. We are working with this because this is for a particular day. So now over here, I'll write probability X is equals to 1 and probability X is equals to 0. Actually, let me just root, uh, use G and B. So probability, and over here, I've used T. Over here, I've used G. I'm just looking at my working. So probability G equals to 1 and probability of b equals to zero. So therefore, this is a e raised to power of negative 0.1 and e raised to, actually one more thing, and then 0.1 raised to power of one over one factorial, and that means multiplication. Probability b is equals to zero, so that is e raised to power of negative 0.15, and I'll just evaluate it over here. So first of all, I just need to move this thing a little bit up like this. Okay. And let me move this thing up also. So this is the working for this first option, which is this one. So let me just highlight this. So this option over here, this working is for this particular option. Okay. The first thing is done. Now, uh, let me move this thing a little bit downstairs. Okay, now for the second option, what needs to be worked out? It could be two girls and zero boys. So probability G equals to two and probability uh, B equals to zero. So E raised to power of negative 0 0.1, 0 0.1 raised to power of two over two factorial and means multiply. And this is the same as above negative 0.15 and I'll write down this answer. So this time let me use a blue box for this and hold for a second. A blue box and a blue box. So two things are done. And let me just shift this thing down. Now comes the third part that this two girls, one boy. So now two girls, probability G equals to two and one boy, V equals to one. So this is E raised to power of negative 0 0.1, 0 0.1 square over two factorial and means multiply. V is equals to one, E raised to power of negative 0.15. That's a very big E, looks scary. So this is E raised to power of negative 0.15. That is for boys. And let me just check the values. 0 0.1, 0 0.15, perfect. And uh, this is 0.15 raised to power of 1 over 1 factorial. And I'll write down this value. So using a different color, that is the box. And this is the box I'm using. OK. And let me just reduce this thing over here. I'm just reducing the size. Now this looks better. So now the three probabilities that I've calculated, the first one is 0 0.077880. The second one for two zero, this is 0 0.003894, 0 0.003894. And the last one is, uh, 
0.0005841.0005841. And in the end, what do we have? Let's add it all up. Add it all up. And this answer after rounding off comes out to be 0.0824, correct to three significant figure. That is this thing. So either this option is there or this option is there or this option is there. That is how we do the calculation. It's only for three marks because not everyone will be able to handle it. So most of the times the difficult questions are for lesser marks if it's something very new. So now this thing is done. And uh, yes, there is something more that is theft. That's a hypothesis test. Now it says following a timetable change, the teacher claims, so following, let me highlight it, following a timetable change, the teacher claims that on average, more students arrive late than before the change. So nowadays they are arriving more late. During a randomly chosen five day period, a total of four students are late. So now, first of all, a total a uh, binomial that was already over here, that is this thing. This is for the total. So let me write this thing first. So T follows a Poisson distribution with 1.25. So this calculation was already shown. You don't have to show it again. And it says more students arrive late than before. So H0, lambda is 1.25. H1, it's an upper tail test. Lambda is greater than 1.25. It's at the 5% level of significance. And what else is there? Uh, a total of four students are late. So four is the sample value. So now <clears throat> we have to test the claim. So it's a pretty basic question. We just calculate the probability X is greater than or equal to four. And uh, that is uh, one minus probability X is less than or equal to three which is one minus e raised to power of negative 1.25 and one plus lambda plus lambda square over two factorial lambda cube over three factorial. And this answer is coming out to be 0 0.38, actually 0 0.03826 or it can be written as 3.826 percent because that's the way I do it. I convert the probability into percentage and then compare with the significance level. Now the probability value, if it's lesser than significance level, both in percentages, then we reject H naught. 3.826 percent is lesser than five percent. Yes, we reject H naught. We accept H one right in the context of the question. That is yes we have sufficient evidence quote the significance level at five percent significance level to accept what the teacher is saying to accept the teacher's claim that is how you write it in the context of this question now uh, what some people do is that it's very easy to do this calculation nothing special but some people, they also use this probability. That is uh, something out of here that if they have calculated something before, well, it's uh, lesser than or equal to two. And this is lesser than or equal to three. So what they do is that they calculate lesser than or equal to two, and then they add this value, x is equals to three. I think uh, that is just a waste of time. You are using a calculator anyway. Write down all your working, show it, because it's not that lengthy. So now this thing is done. We are on question number six. Now question number six says the graph of a PDF. Let me start underlining again. The graph of a PDF probability density function of a random variable X, it's symmetrical about the line X is equals to two. It is given that X between two and five is this value. So maybe uh, you're not able to see it. That's why I've removed the underlining. So what we can do is that, let me draw a line and let me mark some values. This is, we don't know the start, we don't know the end, but we know that the mid value is two and it is symmetrical. That means 50% lie on the left, 50% lie on the right of two. Now it says between two and five is 117 over 256. So let's say five is over here. 
and this value is right over here. Now, because of symmetry, five is three units ahead of two. So therefore, with symmetry, this becomes negative five. So this probability, let me label it properly. So this is negative, but that's a little bit far away. That means this probability should also be the same. So if this is P, this is P. P is 117 over 256. Now they are asking us, X is greater than negative one. So therefore this is negative one. They're asking all the way over here. So now this is like the line of symmetry. This is P and this whole thing is 50%. That's it. So probability X is greater than negative one is basically P, which is 117 over 256 plus half. I can write half as 128 over 256. 117 plus 128, the denominators are the same. I can simply add the numerator. That comes out to be 245 over 256. So it's a pretty basic conceptual question. Now it says, it is now given that for a suitable domain, so now it's still talking about the same question. Keep in mind, this is part A. And uh, this there is no other question, uh, there is no other function that's mentioned. So it's still related to that. So it is now given that for X in a suitable domain, uh, where K is a constant, find the value of K. So this is the information that you have, that if X is between two and five, the probability is this much. So let's integrate the function <clears throat> between two and five. And that is this value of P 117 over 256. That is what we will use. So this is K, this is integration, this is two, this is five. This is 12 plus four X minus X squared DX. And this is 117 over 256. So first integrate before you plug in the limits. This is 12 X. 4x squared over 2, <clears throat> excuse me, minus x cubed over 3 between the limits 2 and 5 equals to 117 over 256. So just plug in the values. I'll first plug in 5. So this is uh, 12 into 5. This is 2 into 5 squared. This is 5 cubed over 3. Let me plug in uh, 2. So that is uh, 12 into 2. 4 over 2 is 2, so that is 2 into 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 8. Now, what I feel is that people make a lot of mistakes when substituting the limit. Don't forget the k. And naturally, it is still equals to 117 over 256, so I'm just short of space. Let me first look at the equation. 12, 4x, negative. 2 positive, 1 negative. 2 positive, 1 negative. 2 positive, 1 negative. All good. 2 positive, 1 negative, 2 positive, 1 negative. Perfect. 12 becomes 12x, 4x becomes 4x squared over 2, which is 2x squared. x squared becomes x cubed over 3, and I have plugged in the limits. So now, uh, what do I have? When I plug in the limits, I get, if I simplify, this comes out to be 205 over 3 minus, this is 88 over 3. Naturally, you will use a calculator. This is the working that you need to show to the examiner. And of course, you're allowed to use the calculator. This comes out to be 117 over 256. So therefore, uh, this is K comes out to be 3 over 256. So that is the value of K in the exact form. Does it say exact form? No, but it's uh, preferable that you work in the exact form. So now this is basically 205 minus 88. If I want to add one more step. So that is over here. That is 205 minus this thing. This is K into 117 over three is 117 over 256. And then you get this answer. So now if we are talking about a different function and this time it has a PDF such and such the domain of X is all values of x for which gx is positive. That's a perfect statement. Now, first of all, let me write gx 2 over 9 and let me factorize it. So when I factorize gx, what happens? This is negative 1 common and this is x squared minus x minus 2. x squared minus x minus 2. 
that is negative one common this is x square and this is uh, negative 2x plus x minus 2 and this is negative one common that is x x minus 2 plus 1 x minus 2 so therefore this is x minus 2 and x plus 1 with a negative sign so there is a negative over here this is x minus 2 and this is x plus 1 that means uh, it's upside down that is the rule of quadratic so let me draw a nice curve over here so this is like this and this is between the limits this negative 2 is positive 2 this is negative 1 this is positive 1 and this is upside down so this first of all this is positive 2 now we know that it says uh, the domain of x the domain of x is all values for which gx is greater than zero. So this is how you draw a sketch. Now they are not asking us to draw the sketch. Some people would do what? They would first find the roots and then they would work out the whole thing for expectation of x, which in my view is a waste of time. So now what I'll do is that I'll just uh, find the mid value. So x coordinate of the turning point that is halfway between the roots. So this is half minus one plus two. This comes out to be one over two, which is half. So therefore expectation is half because it's based on symmetry. 50% of the distribution lies to the left, 50% lies to the right. So that is the logic that is applied over here. Okay, now this thing is done. Now we are interested in finding the expectation of x. Expectation of x is found. We are interested in expectation of x squared. That is this thing, which is uh, x multiplying with this function. That function is uh, 2 over 9. And this is 2 over 9. I can write it outside. So let's integrate 2 over 9. This is x into we have 2 plus x minus x squared, 2 plus x minus x squared dx between the limits minus 1 and 2. So now let's work it out. That is 2 over 9. First multiply, negative 1 and 2. This is 2x plus x squared minus x cubed between the limits minus 1 and 2. Let's integrate 2 over 9. This is a uh, 2x square over 2 plus x cube over 3. And I think I forgot one thing. Let me make myself clear. I'm not calculating expectation of x. I'm calculating expectation of x square. So this is 2x square. And it's good that I understood it at the very beginning. So uh, this is, I'm just charging my pencil. Just hold for a second. So therefore, this is... Uh, x squared into 2, 2x two squared, x squared into x, x cubed. Let me correct this one also. Let me correct this thing. I'll just erase. And this is uh, x squared into x squared. That is x4. So this is 2x cubed over 3 plus x4 over 4 minus x5 over 5 between the limits minus 1 and 2. Always a good idea to double check. So now uh, what we do is that we plug in the values, that is 2 over 9, that is 2 third of 2 cube. This is 2 power 4 over 4 minus 2 power 5 over 5. Uh, put a bracket over here. No, not this thing. And uh, I think that is the one. Okay. So let me just erase this thing. And there is a bracket over here. Let me push this 2 over 9 to this side. Let me draw a curly bracket over here. And then minus. Let me plug in negative 1. So 2 over 3, negative 1 cube. Negative 1 raised to power of 4 over 4. Minus negative 1 raised to power of 5 over 5. Another bracket and then a curly bracket. So now when we simplify on the inside, this comes out to be 2 over 9 into 63 over 20. So nine ones are nine sevens are, this comes out to be 14 over 20, leave it as it is. So now the last thing, 
that is variance of x, that is expectation of x squared minus square of expectation of x. This is 14 over 20 minus 1 over 2 squared. And this comes out to be 9 over 20. Always double check. Are they asking for variance or are they asking for SD, standard deviation? They are asking for variance. So that's how this question is done. So let me take a small break for the pencil to charge up because I don't want to get stuck in the middle. So let me pause the recording. Recording in progress. So now let me continue with the question. Now this is probably the last question, I hope so. The question says the heights and centimeter of adult females in a particular country have mean mu standard deviation sigma. It is known that in the year 2004, the values of mu and sigma were given such and such. Mu is mean, sigma is standard deviation. The government claims that the value of mu this year is greater than it was in 2004. So it's an upper tail test. In order to test this claim, a researcher plans to carry out a hypothesis test at the one person significance level. He records the heights of the random sample of 300 adult females in this country and find the value of the sample mean. State the probability of type one error. You should assume that the value of sigma after 2004 remains the same. Given that the value of mu this year is actually 164.91, find the probability of type two error. And then uh, that's about it. So now the first part is that probability of type one error in normal distribution or a CLT question, that is the same thing as the significance level of the test. So therefore probability of type one, that is equals to one person or you can write 0 0.01, that's your choice. Then they are talking about a type two error. You cannot calculate type two error unless and until you have the critical region. So now if I draw a normal distribution curve, just a small one, and then a line underneath it, and this is an upper tail test. So let me mark one person over here. Let me mark this value as 2.326. And then let me first state that, uh, does it say it follows a normal distribution? I don't think so. So first of all, I'll say sample size is large. Therefore, CLT applies. It becomes a normal distribution scenario. So X follows a normal distribution. What is the mean? The mean is 163.21. And what is the standard deviation? 6.95 squared. And this is X bar and the sample is of 300. So you divide by 300. Next thing is uh, we have to find the critical region. If Z is greater than or equal to 2.326, H naught is rejected in favor of H1. So based upon this, we'll find the critical region, X bar minus 163.21 divided by 6.95 square over 300 square root is greater than or equal to 2.326. And when we work this calculation out, this value is coming out to be 164.41. What does it mean? It means if the sample mean is greater than this value, then we have to accept the government claim at the one person significance level. There is sufficient evidence for that. But now we are interested in type two error. So what will we do? Probability of type two, given that the actual value of the mean is 164.91. So type two is associated with except H naught when H naught is false. Since H naught is false, they give us a new value of the mean and accepting H naught is the opposite of rejection of H naught. So we will go in the opposite direction. So probability X bar is lesser than 164.41. Probability Z is lesser than 164.41 minus this new value 164.91. It's very, very close divided by square root of sample variance 6.95 square over 300. Now, when we standardize it, 
using a calculator this comes out to be negative 1.9188 negative 1.9188 rules of normal distribution the symmetry rule this is greater than positive 1.9188 this is 1 minus 5 of 1.919 let me make this because that is only up till three decimal places so this comes out to be 0 0.0275 and that is the answer for this particular question so I think we started at uh, 8.49 and now we are finishing at 9.40. So basically we took how much time? We took like 50 minutes to do this paper and that's a pretty good time for an S2 paper. And this paper was of Feb, March, 2024. Till the next class, take care.